morning, everyone. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. There are some protests on Lakeshore Drive, so Pastor is running late, but we will get started as soon as he gets here. Thank you. Good, are you? Good. Can I help? Should I take my, my clothes? Yes, please.
Oh, I didn't bring my thing today. Did you plug it back in? Just a minute, folks. We're almost there. Morning, welcome to worship. Um, let's we'll start off with uh, uh, my apologies for starting late. Um, we were well on our way to be here um, early, even, and um, Lakeshore Drive was closed because of the rioting last night and possibly today. So, um, <clears throat> with that in mind, I, I want us to remember in our prayers today. Um, George Floyd, I think is his name, or his family, and uh, all those involved in that uh, situation, um, as well as uh, those that are um, concerned and trying to make a change, and um, we pray for uh, peace and living into our right to free speech, but let's help people remember that the violence is, doesn't make sense. I just, I'm blown away by the violence, I have to tell you. I guess I don't have to, I just did though. Um, we, um, another, another uh, prayer concern to be lifted up. Um, Harold Lindbergh um, died this past week. He's a longtime member of the congregation um, and shut in. Um, and uh, his uh, obituary was in the in the local paper, and so we um, remember his um, family as they uh, mourn his loss. Um, I'm just looking on my phone to see if I can find me, which is a weird thing, right? Uh, since I forgot my tablet today. Oh. Nope, I'm good. Well, if you see anything that I might miss, that's always good. No, I don't want that. I had it. There it is. Okay. Wow, lots of lots of uh, prayer requests. Um, I see um, from Diana, Aunt Jean um, is having congestive heart failure at 87. Um, pray, pray for her. Um, Carl's dad is still in the hospital. Carl is Jesse's boyfriend, um, still in the hospital. We're still praying for baby Melania Lane. Um, she's doing better. Just running through some of these. Um, all right. Thank you for everyone who donated for the um, geraniums. As as you see, they. Uh, make our altar and chancel area look great. Um, uh, prayer request for Paul uh, Gillerlane, um, friends of uh, the Siordias, uh, I think. Okay. So um, let's uh, take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
We go on to the readings. Our first reading today. Um, is my head cut off? It is on mine. That's weird. Uh, our first reading today comes from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Um, we'll be starting on chapter 2 with verse 1. So again, the Acts of the Apostles. Um, that is the fifth book of the New Testament, uh, right after the Gospels. So um, we'll be starting, it's chapter 2, I'll give you a chance to get there if you're um, looking for it. Um, and we'll start with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia. Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading today is from the first, uh, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians, that's uh, just a little bit further in the New Testament, past the book of Acts. Um, We're looking at uh, verse 12, um, I mean chapter 12, so 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, give you a second to find it. We're going to start with the second half of verse 3. I know that sounds weird, but sometimes they cut the verses in half. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 and following. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, 
to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all of the members, all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Join me in the hallelujah. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, 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 luya. Halleluja, halleluja. Holy Gospel today is the Gospel according to St. John, the fourth Gospel, the 20th chapter. This is a short one, so I invite you to look it up if you're going to. Gospel of John, chapter 20. We're going to start with verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, They are retained. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks. Thanks for the safety that we have found. Thanks for the people that you have brought together to be part of our community. Thanks for the love that you show us. Thanks for the guidance of the Spirit. We ask that you send that spirit now among us, wherever we are. Open our hearts and our minds. Bless the words of my mouth that they carry to your people the knowledge of your presence and your activity and your love in this world. Your holy name we pray. Amen. So today is Pentecost Sunday. It's... um, as you've heard me say, it's the, considered the birthday of the church. It's the first day that, the, that we as humans took on uh, Christ's job, kind of. Um, Jesus had uh, already ascended. He ascended on, it actually is a Thursday, because it's 40 days after, um, after the resurrection, after Easter. It ends up on a Thursday. And then <clears throat> 10 days later, we have Pentecost. Pentecost is, um, it actually comes, the word actually means 50 day or 50th day. And it <clears throat> comes from a, a Hebrew celebration, um, sort of the spring festival for the Hebrews, which is 50 days after uh, Passover. So, On this day, again, we have in Jerusalem a bunch of people gathered for the festival. They're there to celebrate. It's um, it's also called the Festival of Weeks. Um, And a Hebrew word that I can't remember well enough to try and pronounce. So, the Festival of Weeks. The Spring Festival. They're all gathered together for that celebration. and, And the disciples are gathered again, and, or the apostles at this point are gathered again together, and all of a sudden we have this scene that I read to you um, from the book of Acts. We have this scene where they're together and they hear this rush of wind, um, and there are tongues of flame all around them, and uh, usually in the paintings and things you'll see a tongue of flame on each one of their heads, representing the spirit. And we could go into a whole lot of things about why tongues of flame and 
<coughs> why um, uh, that represents the spirit and what it means. But the main thing that happens here is that they all start talking in a language they've never spoken before. Clearly, perfectly, fluently. I could have used this tongue of flame a couple times in college when I was studying French in particular. I didn't do so well in French. So they can tell the story. And the people who have gathered, or some who live in Jerusalem, some who have gathered for the festival, hear all the apostles talking at once in different languages. And it makes such a noise that um, people come together and are wondering, what is going on? What is that noise? And I, I love it because some of the more cynical ones um, go, well, they're just drunk. They're babbling. I mean, come on. We've heard drunk people babble. If you had a bunch of people together that were all drunk, who knows what would come out. But, but Peter stands up and he says, wait a minute. I need you all to hear this. This is not... This is not them babbling. This is not them drunk. This is the Spirit giving them the power to speak. And I always love this part because he says, it's only nine in the morning. Of course they're not drunk. I know people that have been drunk at nine in the morning. I know a lot of people that have been drunk at nine in the morning. It happens. <clears throat> Big party. Celebration. Celebration. So it's funny to me that Peter goes there, but then he goes on to explain what is going on. He says, um, this, is, this is them telling the story of Jesus, telling of the works of God. It's the people that have been sent out by Jesus to share his story. This is the first um, gathering we have in the Bible of the apostles after Jesus rose. It is from here on, as the Spirit is given to guide and lead the apostles on earth, that we, that's when we start talking about the church. The church that took on um, the, the responsibility of telling of God's love and God's presence and God's work in the world. And we, in the gospel reading for today, we jump back to the Easter Sunday gospel reading um, when uh, Jesus first appeared to the disciples in the upper room. And um, it, it, it's odd because it feels weird. We just had him ascending and now he's back. But he's not really back. We're focusing on what he did there. He, he says to them, um, receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathes on them. Air, wind, like the sound that they had heard uh, before the tongues of flames come, is another symbol, another understanding of the Spirit. And Jesus breathed the Spirit on him, it tells us, and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. That is the moment they really become apostles. When Jesus sends them out. Apostle, literally, in Greek, means one who is sent out. So they've been sent out to do the work of the church, to do God's work in the world. They've been commissioned by, well, there's another time that they're commissioned, but this is the time that they're fully commissioned to do the work in Christ's place, to feed the hungry and uh, visit the lonely and give shelter to the homeless and clothing to the naked and be with the sick and take care of the, the uh, widow and orphan and all of the things that have been listed that Jesus talked about throughout his time um, preaching and teaching. And now it's up to the apostles. They've been sent out to do that. But Jesus promised them right before he ascended that he would not make them do it alone. He would give them the power. He would give them an advocate there's all sorts of names for the Holy Spirit to guide them, to give them the strength, to show them where to go, to help them as they shared this love and uh, power of God in the world. And so 
This is the day they start. This is when they start talking about and telling of the great works of God, and they do it in all the languages. It's interesting um, to think about the way some of these things are um, bookended in the, in the Bible. So if you think way back to Sunday school, you might remember the story of the Tower of Babel. It's a before Noah story that <clears throat> people decided they wanted to get closer to God, and they band together and started working together to build a tower, a tower that they would be able to to climb up and get closer to God. And uh, God realized that what they were doing was trying to be, be God, trying to take the power of God, trying to take the um, perspective of God in ways that God didn't want us to do. And so he, in the midst of their building, he struck them all with different languages so they could no longer communicate. That's why it's called the Tower of Babel. All of a sudden they were talking in different languages and nobody would understand the other and eventually the tower just was done. It crashed. I think, Jesus, I think God destroyed it and made it so that they couldn't redo it. But here we have God giving languages again, but not for the purpose of breaking people up, for the purpose of bringing them together. God gives these new languages so the apostles can tell the story in the language of the people they're talking to. So the apostles can tell the story in the common phrases of those they're in front of. So, Jesus, or so the apostles can tell the story of Jesus in a way that people understand, that makes sense to them. They can bring this message to the people. It's a, it's a message of unity. It's a movement where the Spirit now, by giving language, brings people together. And that's really the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the gift of the church, that we bring people together. Now, you could go on and look through lots of different things. The Gospel of John talks a lot about unity. We've heard Jesus say it a couple times over the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> There's a place where Jesus also says, in, among my sheep are many flocks. He talks about there are different ways to know me, to come to Jesus. He says, there's, all, there's many flocks. There's different groups. We see that now. A lot of people think, well, these denominations are bad because we're split up. It's not necessarily the case. It's that we understand Jesus in different ways. And I would argue, as I've been saying over the past several months, that part of what's going on here when the Spirit gives other languages is that he's giving other words. He's giving other perspectives. The Spirit is showing people a way to God that is not right out of the Jewish handbook. They don't really have a handbook. But other ways of seeing God work in the world. The point of the gift of the Spirit, the point of the church, is to see the power of God working in the world and share that with others to point it out so that people know that God is working, that there is something that, that connects us all. And you've heard me say that I believe part of what we need to do is begin learning each other's language. Um, <clears throat> I have a friend who, um, whose mother was, from all reports, a pretty... Uh, conservative Christian as she grew up. And now her mom ha has begun studying Wicca. There was a time when I would have been horrified by that. Like, what are you doing giving up Christianity for Wicca? I've learned a lot since then. Um, and my question now is, what's the difference in the language? Wicca makes sense to her. She gets something. She understands. I haven't really spoken with her, but, I, but she understands a little different how the world works through those eyes. 
Does that mean that she's not connected to God? I don't think so. I think she's just talking about the same thing in different words. You've heard me say that um, <clears throat> in talking to some millennials, they, they don't talk about God the way we do. The, the way that we who are re- raised in the church, the way that we who went to Sunday school, or even didn't, the, the, the way that we hear on Sunday mornings, God the Father and the Son and, and, and the gift of the Holy Spirit and all these church terms that we talk about, but they still talk about the connection of people. They may understand a, a, a higher power in general, but it's not personified the way God is for us. Does that mean they're not seeing the same God? That they're not seeing the same connection and power in the world? I don't think so. There are, the, there are those that would say what I'm saying right now is heresy. Because what I'm saying is, even though the Bible says there's one way to the Father and that is through the Son, what I'm saying is, through language, through the Son means different things to different people. We're often too quick to condemn others who don't think the way we do, who don't follow our rules. But Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit. Go. As the Father and I are one, you are one. Share this story. The Holy Spirit comes in wind and fire and changes the language, gives people new language for talking about this God that was so very specifically defined in the Hebrew language. Whole new ways and perspectives of seeing God. Maybe some of those ways have filtered out into the many flocks and other people see God's work in the world in different, from those different perspectives. And that's what we as the church are about to do. We have a perspective. We've been taught things. We have what we believe is true. And so our job is to talk about that. Our job is to share how we see God working. And for me... Growing up in the church, God, the personification of that other power, that higher power, is important. It helps me relate. I understand that. It doesn't work for everybody. But my job isn't to change them. My job is to tell them my experience with God. And that's your job, too. That's how you and I are called together. That's what the church is to be about. Sent out apostles, all of us sent out to share the message of God's power and love and community and connection in the world. So today we're going to share communion in a different way. Hopefully uh, most of you were able to read the explanation I gave. I'll do a brief one in a little bit. Um, Part of communion, it's right in the word. Holy Communion, it's about being community. What we're doing now, the reason that we're online, is so that we can still be community in this time when it's not healthy for us to be together. We can still be community. And Holy Communion is about community. It is the Spirit bringing us together. And it is only communion if the Spirit makes it community. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So what better way to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, to celebrate the community that was created by by God through the Spirit in the sent out ones, the apostles? What better way to celebrate the birth of the church than to share the meal that connects us? We have to be careful in the church not to focus on the laws and legality and rules too much so that we miss the gift of grace. 
When we do that, we condemn others who see God in a different way. And yet, God never told us to condemn. When we do that, we keep people away from the community, whether it's from our worshiping space or our table of grace and the meal. When we do that, we might as well be at the Tower of Babel. There's a couple memes. A friend of mine sent me a meme, I'll just do this real quick, of a conversation that people were talking about God, and they're talking about how things can get better, and, and all of a sudden they start, you see gibberish. If you're reading it, it's because the English turns to Greek. There's also... Um, Look it up if you're a meme fan. There's a Tower of Babel. Um, who are the minions? From Despicable Me. There's a meme about he's describing this city he's going to build, and all of a sudden the words on his, so on his sign change language. So nobody can understand. When we focus too much on the rules, we get in the way. We block the grace, and what we say is jumbled. And the world around us looks like it does today. Our message is community. Our message is united, is love. We need to say that clearly. Amen. <clears throat> okay, I talked a long time. Sorry. Well, I'm not really sorry. I forgot to change the hymn today, so the one that we have in the book is uh, not one that I know the tune well enough to. Um, so I have another one that I was going to do if I can find the words, because I don't remember them. Bear with me a second, please. Okay, well, that didn't work because it's not in there. So we will s s I should sing something. <clears throat> this would have been all worked out if uh, Lakeshore Drive had been open. So I would play it um, on the, uh, <clears throat> from YouTube or something for you, but um, Facebook last week tried to shut us down, not really shut us down, but um, told us that muted part of us because we played the uh, song, I played the song from Michael W. Smith, and they didn't know if we had rights to it. So... Um, <clears throat> okay, this will work. All right, so instead, we're going to do Spirit of Gentleness. Um, some of you know it. Um, kind of yeah, join in, um, and we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. All right, that's probably enough. We're not going to try all the other. <clears throat> 
Let us proclaim our faith with the whole church using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For today's prayers of intercession, we will end each petition with Lord in your mercy and invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in prayer for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart of justice and empathy. We remember especially those now speaking out about injustice in our society, in our culture. And we ask that you bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need, especially during this pandemic. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially those we serve through Share Food, Share Love Food Pantry, everyone on our congregation's prayer list, and those we name silently or out loud now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope, As we have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life. In you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you also, always. Let us share the peace with each other, however we may do that. Um, I had somebody get really excited about the jazz hands last week. So, jazz hands for peace. All right. So, at this point, we are going to... um, 
We're going to have communion together. Hopefully that you... Um... No, go forward one. Yeah, you're right. Follow your instincts, man. <laughs> um, hopefully you were able to prepare and have some kind of um, bread or... Uh, bread or and some kind of wine, fruit of the vine. Um, again, there are a lot of rules that seem to be important when it comes to communion. Um, one of them is that a pastor needs to preside over it, um, but that doesn't change its efficacy. It still works because the power of communion comes from the Spirit. The Spirit giving you faith and belief in the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Luther is very clear. If you believe those words, then Christ is truly present in the bread and wine. Or as we say um, in our fancy Lutheran speak, in, with, and under the bread and wine. So in believing that, it is communion. If you don't believe that, I don't know why you would take it. Now, we do put a pastor over it for good order. That was a Luther thing. He talked about good order. He basically doesn't want you going out on the street and telling everybody that they're now saved because you throw some bread at them or whatever. Um, We try to keep it as close to the original as possible um, just because that's part of the good order. So that's why I say fruit of the vine. That's why I say some form of bread. Um, In my article, you'll see that I uh, know a pastor that once did it in a youth event um, with Mountain Dew. And I said in the article it was Doritos, but I found out yesterday it was um, cheese nips, which actually is better than Doritos because that's actually a wheat bread thing. So that one kind of works. The Mountain Dew, eh. Again, faith, I'm not the one that can say God is not working through that. Communion is a means of grace. So the only rule, if you can even call it that, that you need today for your communion is to believe the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Everything else is up to God. In fact, even that is up to God. So, at this time, if you have um, your bread, um, I invite you to touch it, pick it up, point to it. If you're trying to keep distance, I don't know, whatever. Um, And I will say the official words. They're not magic words. This is not a spell. It does not uh, work that way. This is just a reminder of... um, who we are and what this is about. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, pick up, point to, indicate your wine. <clears throat> Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Now join me as we pray uh, the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now I invite you to distribute the bread and wine, if you didn't already. Um, I'm going to kind of go off camera to do that. Um, But remember um, the words and say them out loud. If you're on your own, you can give yourself communion. I've seen pastors do it all the time. Um, But the words are the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Again, the important part of there, 
of any of that is the for you. Get that part in. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace, share the good news, and feed the hungry. Thanks be to God. Amen. Um, we will uh, be back online again next week. The decision on when we're moving back into the church is, uh, has not been made yet. Um, we will keep you updated on that. If you have any concerns, you're more than welcome to um, let me know or talk to any of the council members. Um, they're listed on the newsletter. Um, if you have any concerns or questions about how communion um, works the way we just did it, um, please reach out to me. Uh, I'd be happy to discuss that with you um, and go from there. Uh, I don't think I have any other announcements. So we'll see you next week.